Hi, welcome to the Air Manager API tutorial video series. In this video, we're going to be talking about helpers or helper functions. So these are a group of functions that um, probably don't fit uh, anywhere in any of these uh, other um, function groups um, but they're all uh, for sort of essentially different things but they uh, they're functions that will help you um, hence the name um, to, um, to um, for doing coding functions that um, you know either are in the case of this one this is uh, peculiar to uh, air manager and get some data out of uh, air manager or some math related ones here um, that might um, mean that you don't have to code those uh, functions individually they're just single lines of uh, of a function that uh, enable you to do certain things within air manager that might make your code a little bit shorter and simpler so the functions that we've got here as I said the first one uh, instrument prop is um, probably specific to uh, air manager in so much as it gets the instrument property so from the um, information that you key in when you first uh, generate uh, an, an instrument it gets a, you can uh, interrogate uh, a lot of those fields for the information that's in them and you can return them into your code and you can d uh, act upon them or d do uh, something with them um, within your code if you so um, wish resource info is another uh, function that um, looks in the uh, air manager resource folder and you give it a file name and it will check one if it exists and it will return some data about that file so it will give you the basic information of what the file type is uh, is it an image is it a font or sound or whatever um, and in the case of the images it will also give you the uh, the width and the height uh, for that thing so you can find a little bit out about some of the files that are in the uh, resources folder the next three are, are kind of math related uh, functions uh, the first one var cap will um, cap a variable um, so you give it a, a value here and you can also tell it a min and a max so whatever this value happens to be if it falls outside of the bounds of the min and the max the returned value back into this variable here at the very beginning will be with inside the bounds of the min and the max so if the value is outside of that it will it will make sure if it's lower than min that it drags it back up to at least what the min is and returns that value the var round um, does exactly that it just rounds the value to the number of decimal places that you specify the var format um, will um, cap the number of decimal uh, places for the uh, particular uh, value so if you're if you had a big long float value with I don't know uh, eight decimal places there and you just said two as the decimals there it would just convert that number so that it only had two uh, two decimal places as part of the VAR format geo rotate is um, kind of a nav, nav uh, type function um, so essentially if you think about this as um, you being in a location and you draw a circle around yourself you want to um, and that circle is of a radius of a radius that you specify here you want to find somewhere uh, on the circumference of that circle so it will you give it also a, a degrees um, argument here so you're saying from that location if you go um, a certain number of degrees in terms of an angle from the location where you are you will eventually intercept that uh, circle and that point where the uh, the degree line intercepts the um, radius of the uh, sorry the circumference of the circle um, will have an x and y coordinate and this is what this function returns it's probably unique in so much as it returns two um, values most of the other ones that return information in air manager return only one uh, but it returns an x and a y uh, so an, an X and a Y position of where that intersection uh, happens to take place so you can use this for things like nav displays um, for putting things uh, say on a map uh, in terms of a low location from where you are to uh, I don't know a waypoint or some traffic or some other thing that you may want to display it just makes the the maths a little bit easier you can obviously uh, work it out uh, but it, it would probably take a few more lines and code than the, just this one here and then the last one is shutdown which is uh, fairly self-explanatory it just enables you uh, and it says I have a type here so it enables you a couple of different ways to shut down um, an application or the, or the whole system and I'll 
show that in a in a an example of how that works. So let's delve straight into the uh, code window. So you can see here I've got quite a few uh, examples here commented out mainly at the moment. We're going to focus just on one at a time. So we'll start with the instrument prop. You can see um, the instrument prop one. There are obviously lots of parameters there to do with these parameters a part of the info that I said when you keyed in when you first started. So you can see we're looking at width here, we're looking at the author field and we're looking at compatible uh, with X-Plane. So that looks at this little tick mark here. So that should return the status of all of this and you can look at any of these aircraft type and it will return description. It would ret just return the word test but you might have quite a lot written in here and it would return all of that. Um, so you can get that, that information back out of the instrument into your code and um, do with it whatever you want. So in this particular example we're just going to run very quickly then. I've just looked at three other different types. Um, so width is the first one that it returns which is 200. We know this instrument is 200 wide so we know that to be correct. The author there that it's got from the uh, author field, my name in there. And then um, compatible with X-Plane you can see uh, that says true. If I were to say untick the compatible with uh, X-Plane and then rerun the instrument you can see now it returns false because that tick isn't there anymore. So it's just essentially reading that uh, information from that info um, that you keyed in w when you first started the instrument. So let's uh, let's get rid of that now. We don't need that anymore and have a look at the um, the next item um, that deals with resource info. So the resource info is looking within your resources uh, folder and you, so you give it a file name so I've said here button.png which I know exists um, but it but it may not uh, and I'm going to return um, whatever it can find out about that uh, file into this um, variable that I've named uh, metadata um, and then in the little um, bit of code that I've got here I'm basically saying if metadata is not nil so in other words as long as this is this is a valid file name that I've given it here it should return something um, it should jump to this else thing and print these uh, different uh, types of parameter uh, of, of the type of information that it may return if not it would print file not found so I know this one exists uh, we'll leave these ones uncommented for a minute Okay, so you can see what it's returned there is this button.png. It's returned uh, image, or it's printed the, the word image, because it's saying that the type of metadata or the type of file that it is is an image file, and it, indeed it is an image file. You can see button.png there. And it's also returned the width and then the height, so this particular image is 30 by 30. If I were to give it a file name that maybe didn't exist, let's choose button 7 as an example, when I run the code now, because obviously it doesn't return nothing in metadata and that that is then become nil my little uh, bit of uh, code here basically just prints the word file not found and you can see it says file not found there so it has to be a valid uh, file so it's a way of checking if if the uh, file that you're intended on using in your code is in the uh, is in the resources folder but you should know that already um, and only obviously uh, call out um, resources that that are in that folder Okay, so the next one um, that um, we can look at, and then just showing you the, the different types here, uh, just so that you can see here, I'll leave this code the same. I've just changed now the metadata. I've commented out the uh, the button.png and I've uncommented the uh, alarm.wav. So it should say it's a sound file now because this is, this is a WAV uh, file. And there you can see now the return is the type is sound. Well there is no width and height because it's a sound file so they're just blank. Uh, uh, for the purposes of this I could probably take them out uh, because both of the um, sound and the next one that I'm going to show you, the font, don't have a, a width and height so they'll just be blank. So that's a sound file. And then the last one very quickly is a font and then you can see when I run that now it returns font. So that's the resource info, fairly straightforward. VAR cap. So here, you give it a 
and this could be a variable name it doesn't have to be a number so I could give this a variable name that has a uh, a, a number associated with it already so a, a variable that's st storing I don't know airspeed or something and I want and I may want to limit that to uh, a min and a max value uh, but for the purposes of this we'll just use the number 15 and I'll say that the minimum uh, that this var cap function must return is 10 and the maximum it must return is 20 so 15 is obviously within those bounds so it should just return 15 and it does 15 now if we try to choose something outside of those so 24 which is obviously bigger than 20 you can see that it just returns 20 because it's outside of the 20 and it would do the same on the negative value really straightforward just a way of capping uh, a value so that it doesn't go outside of uh, a min and a max uh, limit that's var cap the next one is var round so you can see now in my example here I'm saying can you uh, round 2.49999 to no decimal places so if we do that to no decimal places we get the answer too because it's not actually uh, 0.5 it's not going to go over that if I was to say could you do it to a couple of decimal places so maybe two because now it's 2.49 it's going to round it to 2.5 because 2.4 well and the second one is is your nine uh, nine is obviously greater than five so it's going to it's going to uh, round up to the next uh, value and because it's two decimal places it's 2.50 for all intents and purposes so that's your that's your round uh, function again fairly straightforward uh, math related uh, thing but it saves you having to uh, write your own uh, round which I started to do and then I realized uh, this function was available uh, in Air Manager already so uh, great um, use it quite a bit that one VAR format um, subtly different um, to um, the round and so what we've got here is this will just literally uh, give you the number to the number of uh, decimal places that you put in here so if I just say I don't want any decimal places as I've got here zero it will just return two and it does two because that's what I've got there if I say I want uh, two decimal places it will just chop it to two decimal places so 2.49 and it goes on so far format it just uh, enables you to uh, format those uh, those long floats to the number of decimal places that you wish so geo rotate coordinates so this one will don't forget when we when we looked at the uh, API page um, this returned two bits of information so we should see two prints uh, appearing here again you can store all of these um, ones I've just got them uh, uh, printing but you can return these into variable names here so you can put you could put uh, x comma y equals uh, geo rotate coordinates and it would return the the geo rotate coordinates that it calculates into those two variables x and y and you could use that x and y uh, as a means for um, moving an image to that location uh, to display you know the image for a nav aid or a piece of traffic or something else like that so here we're going to say um, 135 well let's let's just choose um, 45 so 45 degrees so think of it as a circle now with we're in the middle of that circle the circle is of a radius of 10 so maybe 10 uh, nautical miles and 45 degrees out from where we are uh, where that uh, 10 nautical miles uh, point intercepts we'll have an x and y coordinates so if we if you were to work out them the uh, the mass for that you see that the answer uh, well if it was one it would be 0 0.707 so you can see it says 7.07 .07. so what it's saying here is that the the X is the first value that it returns so it's saying that 45 being on this side so it's a positive value so it's saying um, 7 in that direction uh, and minus 7 in that direction because if it was plus 7 it would be down from the central position minus is up from the central position so that's why that Y is a minus what I originally had in there if you come um, round from there and choose 135 which is essentially now down in this location we'd get the same two numbers but that minus um, will now be a positive 
uh, the X is still the same. So that's geo rotate coordinates. And then the very last one is um, shutdown. Now shutdown, you can put the word application or you can put the word system in there. If you use application, it will shut down uh, Air Manager. So you could use it to shut down uh, Air Manager. Um, you could operate a button and maybe call the shutdown thing to shut down Air Manager if you wish to. But you could shut down the whole uh, computer too if you were to use the word system. I'm not going to do that. Otherwise, uh, this whole video will just stop. <laughs> but I'm going to show you the application one quickly. So you can see Air Manager is, uh, is open over here. We could even... Uh, uh, have the air manager window there uh, you could have an instrument running at the time i suppose um, and i'm going to issue the, sh uh, the shutdown application and you should see the air manager uh, window close there so we'll run the instrument and there you go instantly the uh, air manager application uh, shut down so that's shut down so the helper functions you can see um, can prove useful when you're doing uh, coding for different things and uh, may prove useful for some of the instrument development that uh, you may want to use them for. I think that concludes the helpers uh, video. Join me again uh, for another uh, tutorial video. Thanks. Bye.